here's what we'll work on in this video. Right now the update temperature function only converts from Kelvin to Celsius, but I'd like for the update temperature function to allow converting from Kelvin to any other unit, such as Fahrenheit. In other words, I'd like to make the update temperature function a bit more generic or general purpose. So what code changes should we make to generalize the update temperature function? For example, how could we get our update temperature function to convert from Kelvin to Fahrenheit? Let's start by creating a function to convert from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. To do this, I'll create a constant named k to f, which we'll set to a function that takes a single parameter, k, for the temperature in Kelvin. Then in the body of the function, I'll set the return value to be the provided temperature k multiplied times 9 and divided by 5, and then I'll subtract 459.67. Okay, so we've got this function to go from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Now the question is, how do we use it? Well, what if instead of hard coding this call to the k to c function, as we did here, we pass the temperature conversion function into the update temperature function? And here's what I mean. I'll add a parameter in front of city which I'll just label convert fn. Then instead of calling k to c, we could just call the function passed into this function convert fn. Okay, so what does this do for us? Well, now we can pass either k to c or k to f into the update temperature function, and the update temperature function will make the correct temperature conversion for us. Additionally, if someone decides that they'd like to convert from Kelvin to some other unit, like Rankine, well, that's totally possible without any changes to the update temperature function. Okay, we've made a change to our update temperature function. That in theory should work. What we haven't done yet is pass the new parameter into the update temperature function right here. So how do we go about passing k to f into the update temperature function? Here's the thing, the map function is expecting a function whose first parameter is an element of the array. In our case, that would be a city but our update temperature function takes two parameters. And the city isn't the first parameter, it's the second parameter. Obviously, our function isn't going to work with map, at least not how it's currently written. There's a solution to our problem, but it might not be obvious. I'll show you one solution. Instead of having the update temperature function take two parameters, we can change it to take one parameter, the temperature conversion function. Now, for the moment, I'll get rid of the second parameter, city. Next, I'll add a new line, and I'll return a function that takes the city as its parameter. The return function here will do the temperature conversion and return the updated city. Now, I bet some of you are probably thinking what we're doing here, passing in a function as an input parameter and returning a function here is pretty weird. I know it seemed weird to me when I first encountered it. If it does seem weird to you, you might need to change your perception of what a function is in JavaScript. It's easy to identify a function as a thing you call to run some code or to transform values, like our k to c function. But often people forget that functions are values just like any other value and can be used in similar ways as other values. Let me drive this point home with a few examples comparing function values and number values. One thing you can do with all values is assignment. So for example, I could create a constant named pi and set it to 3.14. Similarly, I can create a constant named add and set it to a function that takes two parameters and returns the result of adding them together. Another thing you can do with values is pass values into functions. So for example, I can pass the value pi into a function call like console.log, and I can also pass the value add into functions as well. Another thing I can do with values is comparison. So for example, I can compare the value pi to another number. And I can also do a comparison between the value add and other functions. Okay, so as you can see in these simple examples, many of the things you can do with numbers, you can do with functions. Because functions are just values and thinking about functions as values is quite helpful. All right, let's recap where we are in the code. Update temperature is a function that takes one parameter, the temperature conversion function, and it returns a function that takes the city. Then the return function does the unit conversion and returns the updated city. What we just did here, converting update temperature from a function that takes two parameters to a function that takes one parameter and returns a function that takes the remaining parameter, is called currying. And as you'll see in a moment, it can be quite handy. Now down here in the call to map, 
we need to pass in the first parameter to the update temperature function, which is the temperature conversion function, and in this case, k to f. Now keep in mind, what's returned by our call to update temperature is a function that'll be used by the map function. Let's try running this code. And it looks like it worked. The temperatures seem about right. Okay, the way we queried the update temperature function isn't ideal. Let me show you what I mean. I'll create a constant named city and I'll set it to the first element of the city's array, index zero. Now I'll create a new constant named updated city, which I'll set to the value returned by calling the update temperature function, and then I'll pass in the first parameter, k to f. What's returned by this function call is another function, which is highlighted here. I can call that return function by adding a set of parentheses on the end and passing in our city. Let's see if this works by console logging updated city. And if we run our file, it seems to have worked. Okay, this works, but the syntax is kind of ugly. It would be nice if we didn't have to use the extra set of parentheses here. It would be easier to code and read if we could just pass in the two parameters as you would for normal function calls. Ramda has a nice function that allows us to do exactly this, which I'll show you right now. Let's go tweak the update temperature function. First, I'll get rid of the inner function that's being returned here. Then I'll add the city back in as the second parameter. Now I'll call Ramda's curry function, passing our function here into curry. Here's what using Ramda's curry function does for you. It allows you to call the update temperature function in a normal way, like you see here but you can also call the update temperature function without providing all the required parameters, which is what you see here. When you call the create function and you don't provide all the required parameters, what's returned is a function that expects the remaining parameters. By the way, when you call a create function without all its required parameters, it's called partial application. Let's run this code again. And as you can see, the individual city is getting its temperature updated using the nicer, more familiar syntax. Additionally, the updated cities list is properly updated as well. Cool. What I just showed you, currying, is used extensively in Ramda. In fact, every function in the Ramda library is automatically curried by default. Remember how I mentioned in the last video that I prefer to use Ramda's map function over the map function that comes with the rays? There's a few reasons why I prefer Ramda's map function, and one of the big reasons is because Ramda's map function is automatically curried. You'll see exactly how this comes in handy a bit later in the series. Let's start using Ramda's map function. I'll get rid of the cities here and I'll replace it with r, the constant that points to Ramda. Ramda's map function takes the array to act on as the last parameter, so I'll pass in another parameter at the end, which is the cities array. In the next video, we'll start to look at how we can grade or score each city based on things like the cost and the internet speed.